Welcome. Say, how would you like to take the most mysterious, exciting, adventuresome trip in the world? We're going to do that in this little half hour. Now, what we're going to take a trip into is a little different than you think. It's not geographical. It's sort of mental. It's into these very hazy realms of human existence about which nobody knows anything for certain. The world's most brilliant philosopher or scientist, they all guess. Nobody knows. We're going to guess too, but we're going to use reason and common sense. We're not going to use any prejudices, no dogma, no bias. You're going to use your basic intelligence and we're going to stretch it to the limit and it's going to be fun. Well, the time has come for us to enter the realm of pure human reason. So come along with me as we travel through the door. Most philosophers start out with essences, absolutes, uh, absolute ideas. Uh, they, they conjure up these things which they say can't be seen because our senses distort them. Uh, you see a tree, and Plato said, that's a tree because it partakes of the absolute idea of tree. Well, that doesn't make too much sense to most of us. But they say that you can't know absolute ideas because your senses distort them. Now here's an example of what they mean. Look here. You see two vertical lines which are equal. Now Plato would say they're equal because they partake of the essence of equality. Well, your senses distort them, he says, and this is why. See? Look here. They're no longer equal, are they? They are equal. It's that your senses now have distorted them. Well, we're going to do away with all these inventions of the human mind, which really don't explain anything, and we're going to try using our, our own basic intelligence and look around us in life and see what we can find. What do we see? Well, look here. What do you see here? You see a bunch of vertical lines of different length, right? All right, now look here. Now they're arranged in descending order. All right, they all have a different length. Now what do you see? You see a black triangle. But is it a triangle? Here's another little illusion of the mind. We call it a triangle, but in, base, in, in reality, it's this. It's an infinite number of lines of various si lengths, all arranged in a serial sequence. You see? And this shows it right here. You see, the lines now have been taken out, dr graphically demonstrated, of course, and exaggerated. What else do we see? Well, here we have a bunch of colors, red, blue, and green. Now it's easy to see the difference from one to the other because you have one bright one here and a very faint one over on the end, right? But between the first two, it gets difficult to see gradations. Yet, between those first two, even though your mind can't discern it, is an infinite number of gradations. Well, what do we have here? We have a human who's the tallest and a human adult who's the shortest. But are they the limits? Could there be a human a foot taller than that tall man and a foot shorter than that short man? Well, we're not sure, but we guess there could be. In other words, we don't know the limits of length, of height, of color. We don't know the limits. So we have one fundamental concept, possibility. Now that is in the physical sphere. What about the mental sphere? Look here. We have a bunch of long, narrow, black rectangles. And we arrange them into this form of a, an asymmetrical cross-like figure. Well, some of you looking at this figure would say, uh, so what? You're indifferent. Others look and say, hmm, that's a very delightful thing. And a few of you say, terrible, asymmetrical, very bad art. Now let's just rearrange just barely one, of those, one or two of those possibilities that you're looking at there and see what happens. Look. Now what happens? Now the majority of you are pleased. A few of you are disgusted and a few of you are blasé, disinterested. 
Let's rearrange them a little more. Now what happens? Aha! Now the majority of you are disgusted, a few are pleased and delighted, and a few are blasé. So what have we shown with these extremes? We've arranged, we've changed the arrangement of just a few possibilities, but look at the spectrum of emotional response. That's mental. So in the mental and physical realm, we come up with a fundamental concept in, in our uh, sojourn into this unknown realm. And the concept is possibility. Now we all sort of know what a possibility is more than uh, absolute idea or uh, thing in itself beyond the senses. Uh, so substituting the word possibility doesn't hurt and it helps a little. A possibility is defined in the dictionary as the capability of existence or transpiration, that which may transpire, that which may take place, or that which may occur. Well, we've got possibilities, but what else do we need for our life that we're probing? There are an infinite number all over. We need one other thing, and we know we have it, and that is awareness, perception, consciousness. Now, these are the only two things you need to assume to explain, really, in a way. You don't understand it, but it explains it in a way, the consciousness of, of our existence. First, you have possibilities, and then you have awareness of those. Now, if you had awareness without any possibilities, you'd have nothing, no existence. And if you had possibilities but no awareness, you have no existence. Therefore, existence is defined fundamentally as the awareness of of at least one possibility. You see, if the only possibility were color red, you're aware of red. That's a form of existence of some sort, not in the human sense, of course. See? Now, first of all, what is the fundamental, uh, what is the fundamental uh, characteristic of possibility? We don't know. We don't know what it might be in itself. We know they're all different. There's an infinite quality. And the only, only characteristic they have in common is perceptibility. We know they all can be perceived. Now, we don't know anything else about them. See? Awareness, the only thing we know about that is that we have it. We don't know where the organ of it is. We assume it's the brain, but that doesn't prove it, assumption. The brain may be the organ of manifestation of awareness or consciousness, but it may not be the organ of production of the consciousness. It may contribute to it. In fact, the whole body, all the cells may contribute to the production of awareness, but it's manifested through the brain. Can't prove it, but it's a good theory. Now, exactly how many possibilities are there and exactly where are they? Well, you try to imagine this as a, you know, they're infinite in number. And the space we don't know yet. We're going to define space in a minute. We don't know what space is. So they're infinite in number, but you try to imagine this. Most people do by imagining a gigantic sphere uh, of unlimited size. You can't really do that. It staggers the mind. Let's do it the other way. Let's take the sphere and turn it inside out so that the space radiates out in all directions and the surface becomes condensed into a tiny central focus like that. You see? Right in that spot is an infinite...